everyone. Welcome to Doc Tales. This is our um, second edition of our Doc Tales effort. Uh, if you were with us when Wendy Wilson and two of her lovely daughters joined us, then you saw the first episode. Um, as you know, Doc Tales is just a little undertaking that we're doing to help so many of the planners out there just get in touch with some more loopers and kind of to try and inspire the trip. So uh, with us today are Dan and Jody Sines. They are from Dundiggin. And as you'll find out, as you continue your loop planning, you'll start to know everybody by their boat names more so <laughs> than their actual names. So Docktails is really just some gold loopers chatting with me and sharing the story of their loop. So I want to welcome Jody and Dan. Thanks for joining me, Jody and Dan. Thanks, Kim. It's great Hi, to, nice be to be here. Yeah, and you guys are coming to us from Florida, which is- We nice. are. We are. <laughs> Since you're not in the kind of the area of the country that is in the deep freeze. <laughs> no, thank goodness. That was the plan for this winter. <laughs> yes, very smart indeed. Um, actually, I can't really complain. We're here here in Charleston. I think it got close to 65 today. We saw the oh, sun that's great. Time in a few, a few weeks. So yay for that. Yay. Um, but yeah, so our, our objective is really just to help inspire some others to do the loop through your story. So start off and just tell us a little bit about, you know, who you are, where you're from, what life before the loop was like for you. You start. <laughs> I, knew, I, knew he was, I knew he was gonna say that. <laughs> so we live in Massachusetts. Our dirt home, as, as people call it, is in Massachusetts. Um, we both worked our whole lives in Massachusetts. My husband building homes, I was in human resources. And we retired in 2018 and um, had been preparing for quite some time before before that, that in different stages of planning for a few years before we started. So in 2018, we retired. Our boat wasn't ready in time for us to actually start the loop that summer. So we decided to go south for that winter. So we brought the boat down to Florida, cruised all the way down to Florida and then started the loop in the spring of 2019. Mm -hmm. And you had been with boaters before you started the loop, correct? Very little. Um, we it, the, the loop is something I always wanted to do. I, I found out about it at a, a fairly young age because I had an older brother who had a friend that was talking about it all the time. Mm -hmm. So it was something that was just on my list to do. And as we started coming down to retirement, I said to my wife, you know, we're just going to go buy a boat, something that's not going to kill us. We could cut a hole in the bottom of it and sink it if we hate it. So we, we went out and we did. We bought an old boat and we, uh, we ran it for a couple of summers and we loved it. And then started looking for something that was a much better boat to actually loop in. Mm -hmm. And tell us a little bit, because I've read some of your story, because Jody has written a chapter in the book, Ladies on the Loop. And if you haven't come across that ebook, um, you can find it in a lot of places. You can probably search for it at this point and find it, but it's in AGLCA's document library. It's in the Great Loop Facebook groups attachments. But Jody wrote a great chapter in there that was really inspiring. So tell us a little bit about how the two of you met, because it's kind of a neat story. I will. And as far as the, the book, another way to find is Susan on Lucky Me Looping. I'm sure she'd be happy to yes. send people a, the link for it as well. Um, so we, we kind of a long story. We actually knew each other in the 80s, went our separate ways and got back together again, I think about 15 years ago now. We've been married for about 10. And when Dan says that we were planning on doing the loop, it's a bit of an exaggeration because when he and I started getting close again, he kept saying, when I retire, I want to sell everything and just go cruise on a boat. And I'm like, that's nice. And as we got more serious, he'd say, OK, well, are you are you in? Are you going to go on this boat trip with me? And I'm, I just kept saying, sure, 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 never thinking it would come to fruition. And the closer we got, the more I realized he was very serious about it. So, um, so it was fun. But. Yes. So, Jody, were you apprehensive about it? Very. I, I'll be honest. I'm a nervous boater. I was a. I would say on a scale of one to ten, one to ten, um, with nerves on a boat, I'm still a six. But at the time, I was a twelve and a half. You know, when we first started boating, um, it, when the boat would sway side to side, I'm sure that was it. We were going to tip over and drown. And um, 
I was a very nervous voter. Um, but the more I learned, the more experience we had, the more comfortable I get. Yeah. And I'm going to talk about some over the course of this. I'm actually going to risk while we're live plugging in my headset because I'm hearing some kind of static that's like a feedback kind of thing. So give me huh. let's see if that helps. All right. Hopefully. Oh. Okay. Can is that you... better? I can hear yeah. you. Can you still hear me? Yeah. Yes, yeah. we can. Okay. And that does seem a little bit better. Yeah, we don't have any yeah, feedback I'm not sure if it was, and I'm not sure, but just in case everybody, I was hearing it, and it may just be because I was using the speaker on my computer, but just in case everybody else is hearing it, we'll go this way just in case, um, okay. because that did seem Sounds to fix good. it on my end. Um, so <laughs> for those of you who are watching live, you can type into the comments. Um, we are coming to you because Facebook Live likes to have one person and of course we have two well three of us but in two different locations so we're coming to you from a third party streaming that's feeding out to facebook live but we can still this time see your comments um so if you know dan and jody and just want to say hi go ahead and type that in we'll see that if you have questions we can answer those as well so i know if you were with us the first time when we did this with wendy wilson we did it through zoom and we were really missing that interactive piece where we could see what those of you on Facebook were typing. So technically it worked fine, but we wanted to be able to interact with you a little bit better. So this platform allows us to do that, assuming it's all pro properly functioning, but we're hoping to be able to see your comments. So if you have some questions or comments, go ahead and type that in and hopefully we'll be able to see them. Um, so continuing on a little bit with your story um, and, and some of these things, you know, I, uh, because I know a little bit of your story from the book, um, I thought you were ideal to bring into this environment because I think there's lots of people who have similar concerns, Jody, as you did being a nervous boater and perhaps a bit of a reluctant spouse. Um, but then Dan also had some health setbacks that you talk about in the book. And I think as so many of us are getting older, we face those. And, and for some, it's, um, you know, kind of a wake up call that maybe now is the time to do the loop. Um, so talk, if you don't mind sharing a little bit about that, um, you know, tell us how that affected your whole plan. It is definitely a wake up call. I, I, I look for boats. I mean, in my mind, seriously, but probably not really seriously for three or four years. And I kept saying, yes, I'm going to do this. And I had some fairly major health issues that like stopped my boat search, searches, stopped all, all my loop and all that, and was fortunate enough to have a, a full recovery and said, you know, life's short. You know, if you've got things to do that you're planning and you want to do them, you should get them done because you just, you just never know. I was an extremely healthy person in a, in a physical industry without any problems and got extremely sick almost overnight. Mm -hmm. so. And uh, I think particularly in today's times, COVID is proving that to some people as well, um, because it certainly has impacted a lot of members. And I know this was prior to COVID, but um, so were you- Just, just one more thing, thing about that I want to say. It's, it's yeah. I, I will mention on the lighter side, I don't know how light it is, Our after he got better, our budget for the boat doubled. I'll say that. <laughs> it's like, we're not going to live forever. Let's just take it with us. Um, and the second, oh, I forget the second thing. <laughs> I forget what the second point was. But, um, no, oh, I know what it was. I knew he was feeling better, that the test results and the doctors were telling us that he was better. But when he started boat shopping again, I knew he was going to be okay. That's yeah. the second point I wanted to make. Well, and the, the increased budget, that's a, a great way to look at the bright side. Yeah. <laughs> Love that. Um, so were you already retired when you were ready to start the loop? How, you know, talk, tell, talk a little bit about your, your, the industry you were in and what made it the right time work-wise. Uh, well, I was old enough, <laughs> for one thing. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, I had missed close to a year of work, I guess, when I was sick. I went back to work for another year after I recovered while we were trying to get everything situated again. Mm -hmm. And for me, I was, I was, of course, I was 60, 66. I was just, and I wanted to go do my trip. And I'm, I'm younger. <laughs> Yay. And, and so I had to retire so we could do the trip. So. And I didn't mind a bit. I was ready. I, I 
we live in Massachusetts and I worked in the city and we live in the suburbs and I was so tired of commuting. And I, we joked that the last time I wanted to see a specific bridge in Boston was when we were on our way out of Boston, on our boat, <laughs> which was a pretty big milestone. Absolutely, for sure. So tell us about Dundigan. Tell us about what kind of boat she is and, and what made her your choice when you were doing the boat shopping with the increased budget. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a 43 foot lagoon power catamaran. Um, it has a 21 foot beam, so it's a rather large boat. But mm -hmm. I started out just looking at trawlers and looked at them for a long time in their beautiful boats. And then I decided, you know, I just can't live the rest of my life at six knots. I need a little bit more speed. And the catamaran kind of fell into a, a nice little hole for me between, you know, the amount of fuel that a fast boat runs on and in a trawler. So I can't, I don't get trawler mileage, but I can run faster and not melt the credit card. <laughs> and, and I like the larger walk arounds were very nice for Jody. And, the storage space on them is incredible. And we plan on leaving for, for a couple of years. We did, we were on the boat for two years before we got it home. So it was just, it was a very comfortable platform with lots of, lots of space, lots of storage space. It, for us, everything, it worked out perfect for us. And, and when he talks about the wide walk arounds, uh, you know, the big walk arounds that we have, it's, it's good for both of us, but as he, ooh, oh, Amber oh, alert. Sorry, Amber no, alert. Okay. Probably everybody's getting it in the neighborhood. Um, the uh, Dan's the captain of the boat. He he drives the boat most of the time or operates the boat most of the time. And so I always do the lines. I do the lines and the fenders and all of that. And on our older boat, there was a part of the boat where I had to hang on to the railings and sort of shimmy my way. And I wasn't comfortable with that. So once we found that boat, it felt safer and it was a big big plus for me i and and it's it's big enough to it has a huge bow we can have lots of people on which we have done on and off the loop it, it's a it's a nice boat for entertaining yeah well and that makes a lot of sense for someone who is you know a little bit more apprehensive um and i think a lot of people when they first start to climb on board boats that are considerations for the great loop if they haven't actually been out there handling lines Right. We don't always think about things like that's that. Right. So right. Um, that's great advice to somebody who maybe is apprehensive. Even if you're not apprehensive, it's a lot easier to be handling lines um, when you're feeling safe and comfortable and not having to kind of struggle to climb over or, you know, deal with parts of the boat that aren't really. Right. Or hang on with one do. hand and try to throw the line with the other. It's 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 hard to do. Yeah, exactly. So that's that's definitely one of the pluses of your boat. Any other features? Um, you know, of course, catamarans are known for their roominess, but any other um, and we actually have uh, one question. We have a um, person wanting to know, just once again, what was the model of the boat? It was a Lagoon 43, Power 43. L-A-G-O-O-N, Lagoon. Okay. Um, so any other benefits that you want to point out about Dundigan? Well, in our, um, our, our bedroom, I know there's a boating term for it, but our bedroom, <laughs> we have, um, it's a king size bed. It's a mm -hmm. comfortable bedroom for us. It is not technically a walk around because it just, it, it's kind of up on a platform. For, so it has two steps on either side mm -hmm. and it has two heads in the master as well. So we mm -hmm. have his and hers bedrooms. So from a comfort perspective, that that's, that's nice. And for guests, the, the two forward staterooms, also had complete heads and showers. So nice. when we did have company, everybody was on their own. Yeah, well, and there's a reason that a lot of the uh, charter boats that you find in, in the Bahamas and the Caribbean and, and overseas are power catamarans. Right, so, um, you, can, you can put a lot of people on them if you want. Yes, and Sue from Lucky Me says hi. I don't know hi, if you Sue. So that. <laughs> um, so another question about the boat that came in for you. Um, John wants to know, with a 21-foot width, did you have limited marinas to dock at? And that's a question that comes up lots of times All the time. considering yeah. a catamaran. Yep. Do you want to answer it? We honestly never had a problem. Uh, our problem with that would be, I mean, the first year when we brought the boat home from Florida and we really didn't know what we are doing, we would be calling for marinas, you know, like, it's, it's 2.30 and we want to come in and we start looking for marinas. 
and sometimes would have to call a couple, you know, to finally find a spot. But planning ahead, we never had a problem when you place one. Yeah, that, that's what I would say with the with the we were almost always on um, a tee head or on a face stock. And um, it, as long it takes a little bit of planning, but on the whole loop, I don't think there was ever a time we couldn't find a place to stay. And once it was, sometimes it would take one or two calls, but we didn't really have an issue. That's pretty much what I hear from all of our members aboard catamarans. Right. Um, and several years ago, I had a, a very a much smaller power cat. I think it was 18 or 19 feet, uh, maybe 17. I don't know. It was like an 18 foot glacier bay. Um, but mm -hmm. one of the things that I loved about well, you it did, was, you had that? Yeah, many years ago. Yeah. Uh, one, of the, one of the things I really liked about it was it's the handling ability on a cat because the you've got two engines and they're spaced pretty far apart. So talk to us a little bit about how that the cat handled compared to your previous boat. It, it's far more responsive because of mm -hmm. the spread of the, the props. It, you know, for me, being in the construction business, I happened to drive a bulldozer for a while when I was growing up. And it, it, it honestly was exactly the same. Um, Don't get it, that. It's, um, it's, you, you set your rudder, you're going into dark, you set your rudder at neutral, you use nothing but the props, and you can almost make it walk sideways mm -hmm. in, without thrusters. You know, it's just, it. it's an extremely, you, I was I was intimidated when I first got on it. I looked at the size of it, and then after a couple of days, when you felt figured out how it handled, I could put it almost any place. A I couple of days. Well, <laughs> he's <laughs> exaggerating. Yeah. But once once I was once I was used to the boat, right, I stopped right. worrying about when they, the marina said, "Okay, go down there, go in the third fairway, and all the way to the to the end," mm -hmm. and you'd look and it was. It's narrow. I don't know. Okay, do this, but the boat was respons responsive enough that I had no problem with any of that stuff. Yeah, and I don't know whether this is going to come up, but I was just thinking again about the the width. A lot of people have asked us about the locks, mm -hmm. and especially on the Trent Severn, there is the most narrow lock on the loop is in the Trent Severn. It's the last one, I think. Is that lock forty three? Yeah. I think mm -hmm. um, it's twenty three feet wide, and we're twenty one. So plenty, um, <laughs> plenty of <room>. we <laughs> called true. ahead and we talked to them and we told them they were com we were coming and they expected us and the lock masters on the entire Trent Seven were spectacular and so yeah. it it we we made it and um, you know people kept saying you're never going to make it through there were parts of the Trent Seven mm -hmm. friends we'd made who were ahead of us mm -hmm. were calling and texting and saying it's you're never going to make it it's too narrow it's too narrow but w I think everybody's perception of width is a little bit different when you're actually in it. So we sure. made it and we, and, and he knew we would make it. I, I was worried. I was nervous a little bit. <laughs> I planned ahead. <laughs> but that's good to know because I was going to yeah. ask you about yeah. the Trent Severn. I didn't know if you yeah. had done it or not. Um, we did. It was the fantastic. the boat that I'm aware of that has done it. Yes, it is 23 feet. That's, you know, the measured width. That's what they say. Um, so you had us, a they told us. on each side. <laughs> we they, yeah. they only had us put fenders on one side so mm -hmm. that we fit. And they told us we were the widest boat they'd ever put through. Yeah. It tapers. Yeah. It's a little bit narrower at the bottom. Gotcha. And the, well, and the Lockmasters, you're right. The Lockmasters on the Trent Severn are, you know, absolutely first rate and they are. make sure they know what they're doing with all different kinds of boats. Be between that um, and the lift lock and the big chute, um, yeah. you know, they really – they're careful with boats. <laughs> Amen. Some yeah. Very interesting yeah. Locks they sure are. They're on the Trent Severn. So that's always yeah. good to know. Um, and it, and you talk, if you talk to the lock masters, there was mm -hmm. one other place in the Trent where there was a narrow spot. That's the what, yeah. In between where we were leaving and where we were going to. And we called ahead to ask the lock master who was coming and all this. We told them who we were and what's going on. There's no problem. Keep coming. I got a guy here. I'm going to hold him for 10 minutes and you guys are going to pass right at, at the white point. Mm -hmm. And we did and it worked out perfect. Yep. Yeah. Yep. That communication in all things yeah. is key, yeah. but also on the for list. Sure. <laughs> so is there anything about Dundiggin that you would have changed if you could or any, and I asked that question and I get a lot of 
nope, our boat was perfect because I think people do <laughs> tend to love their boat and, and you know adapt to any initially perceived shortcomings. But anything you, you can point to kitchen? that you would change? <laughs> the galley's too small. Okay, right? it's it's really a it's it's a one butt galley as I we both said, and you know there's no room for a full size fridge, so it, it's it's an, 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 an under the counter fridge. I mean, we got the mm -hmm. largest cubic feet we could fit and it's amazing how much you can fit into a refrigerator it also has a really deep big freezer so um with a shelf that's sort of refrigerator so we worked it all out mm -hmm. dan built a um little portable countertop that i could slide um in a at, oh gosh at the top of a companion way um mm -hmm. so we made it work is what i'm trying to say it was the galley was small um i would have preferred a bigger galley but yeah well and like so many things it's a trade-off on the boat um right you know cats are very spacious in other places um so Do you yeah, want to talk about the engines getting in and out of the engine yeah yeah i mean i from my point the the downside of the catamaran is there is not a lot of space around the engines mm -hmm. you know i figured out how to crawl around them and do everything i needed to do but you know a walk around engine room would have been nice but they just don't come that way right gotcha <laughs> so um anything i didn't ask you about the boat that we should mention do you still own Dun the same dundigan we do yeah, yeah. we we left it uh, we put it on the hard in um, massachusetts the first winter she's been there in three years mm -hmm. um and decided to drive down to florida this winter and we're going to go home beginning of april and get her ready to do some cruising this summer Excellent. Yeah. So you mentioned right at the beginning, Jody, that you know the boat kind of wasn't ready to start your loop initially when you wanted to. So you headed south first. So that was kind of your your first big cruise. Um, yeah. Tell us about that because you were <laughs> a little bit hesitant, a little bit reluctant, a little bit nervous. How did it, it go those quite, first few days? <laughs> it was quite the shakedown cruise. Our, our first day, and if anybody knows the area, was from our home. Um, to Provincetown, so we were in open water for seven hours. Seven hours. It was a a big first day, and mm -hmm. then it was fall. It was late September, so we kept getting caught up for weather. So we had weather delays, and it was very windy. There were how many hurricanes that season? I think oh, it was like three in a row coming up the coast, and <laughs> right. we got the remnants of all three. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> it was, um, it, but so we picked our days as carefully as carefully as we could. What I didn't like about it was that um, it was cold. It got cold by the time we got, I mean, we had some 30, four, the day after Thanksgiving, we were in Savannah and it was 34, no, Charleston. Charleston. Where we were for Thanksgiving. We're, we left Charleston, Charleston and went to Savannah. It was 34 degrees. You know that, Kim, that it can be cold there in November. Unfortunately, um, yes. <laughs> And we we didn't we met some nice sort of ICW cruisers, but we didn't have any buddy boats we that we'd heard about at Rendezvous. We didn't have people. We hadn't met our people yet. Um, so it was a, for me. It was a little lonely. It was, um, but but the good part was it was it was just so beautiful to see waters we'd never seen before. I mean, to to bring your boat into the Chesapeake Bay for the first time was a thrill. And, and one of the roughest days we ever had, because we, you know, we, we've we learned about which weather apps to trust <laughs> and which not, but we were, we were learning. That was, yeah, I'd say it was a learning a, curve. It really was a big learning curve. Yeah. yeah. Well, what are some of your favorite weather apps? Windy. I like Windy and um, Ventusky. Ventusky. What else have I got on here? What was that second one? That didn't sound Ventusky. like Ventusky. Hmm. V-E-N-T-U-S-K-Y. I don't think I've come um, across that one before. Somebody on the loop yeah, told, us told us about, about it, it, actually. And I like it. It, it. It's fairly accurate, and you can get wave height, swell heights, wind wind speed, it, mm -hmm. all in one place just by touching a button. And you can scroll it out for like three days, which is about useless, but it's nice to, nice to, nice to kind of think you know what's happening. Nice to at least, you know, take a guess as to whether that's what you're going to be able to do in three days and keep yeah. an eye on right. it. But yeah. Right. But well, we use Windy most of all. Mm -hmm. And I use Noah. I use Noah. Mm -hmm. The Noah Boo reports, I use that. And uh, I look at Mars, but I mean, he's mostly offshore, but it, it's 
gives you a good indication, you know, if it's doing that out there, you know, what it may be like closer to the shore or inside. And we learn to look at more than one, just to, not to count on one weather app. And, and um, when we were traveling with other people, we'd have captain's meetings in the morning and they'd all compare notes on what they were thinking if we were, if there was a go, no go decision that needed to be made. I used so, to try to look at four apps and if I could get two of them to agree with each other, I thought maybe they might be. You got a 50% chance they might be right. Yeah, two's about the minimum I would rely on. Yeah. It would be nice if you could get three to, or yeah, it doesn't gosh, happen. gosh, all four, but that would never happen, right? That'd be yeah. bingo. Yeah, exactly. So um, you kind of mentioned, Jody, that you know those first days was shakedown cruise, some rough weather. Um, what were you thinking when this was happening? And you hadn't fa kind of found your tribe yet, um, which is important for a lot of loopers. So what were you thinking yeah. at this point in the shakedown cruise? A few days in, it's cold. Um, I, I honestly, I don't think I believed we were really going to do it <laughs> until the following spring when we were getting toward the Hudson River, like going through New York. The, second time or our yeah. third time actually i just kept thinking this is too big for us i don't think we're going to be able to do it but um you know, you know so in the very beginning honestly i didn't think we we're going to do it i kept thinking at some point we're going to realize this is too big for us and turn around and go home or leave the boat here and go home um but the day but we we just kept getting more comfortable and I went, when the weather when the weather got warmer too it's just you know we realized we we had most days knew what we were doing, mm -hmm. <laughs> so, or I realized it. Dan, Dan was never nervous. He, right, he right. was confident and kept telling me we'd be fine. We're, well, he always says that about everything, but he kept saying, we'll be fine, don't worry, everything's gonna be all right, so. So when did you realize, Jody, that you were actually gonna do this? Was it as you were coming towards New York and he didn't head east to go back towards Massachusetts? <laughs> yeah. Like, okay, okay. Went up well, the Hudson. Go. we have to, we're going up the Hudson, I guess we're really gonna do this. Um, what, Honestly, I think, yeah, around that time, I realized that we were really going to do it. And um, I I started to, everything was coming more naturally to me. Again, Dan was always, it, he took to it really quickly. Mm -hmm. I, I could anticipate what the next day was going to look like or what, and, and, and the other big thing, and I talked about this in, the, in my chapter on the uh, Ladies on the Loop book was somewhere along the line, we just started treating each day as a boat ride. It, it, I realized if I kept thinking, oh my God, we have 5,000 miles to go, we have 4,500 miles to go. If I kept doing that, it was just too big for me. We, it would be, okay, we're here now tomorrow, we're gonna do this. And then the next day we're gonna do this. And and it became more fun when I got involved in the planning and the, you know, the, he always did the charting, I, I haven't done that. But in, I did, I called all the, I, I was always the one who, decided on where we'd stay and made all the calls and looking at weather apps and all that stuff. The more involved I got, the more I enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. And that's a little bit about what you write about in the book about your toolkit, mm -hmm. um, which is such a, I think just such a great idea for somebody who is unfamiliar and uncomfortable starting off. Um, and, and it's just great that you developed this toolkit that really helped you. And I think it could help a lot of others. So tell us a little bit about what's in your toolkit. Yeah. So it's funny because I, I think I didn't realize I was developing a toolkit until I, I sat down to write about the trip. Mm -hmm. um, so it was definitely for me being more involved. That was number one for me, not, being, not just being a passenger on the boat, but being a, a partner in the trip. Um, that was the number one thing for me. Um, I'm trying to think of some of the other things that I wrote about as a toolkit. I'm forgetting. Um, I journaled. I started out sort of just keeping a log that said what, you know, how many hour, engine hours there were, how many uh, miles we went that day, when we fueled, when we pumped out. But I started writing a little bit more on our way down before we even started the loop about um, start, finish, hours it took, miles it took anything good or bad that happened that day and how I felt about it. And then I started writing a blog and I started a blog, which my, I did it for friends and family, but it really became, I really liked it. It was sort of cathartic for me. It was, uh, you know, I could uh, wrap my head around what had just happened. I tried to do it once a week um, during the busiest part of the loop, which I would say 
probably Canada. Canada yeah. The Canada part was probably the busiest part. But, um, um, and to, I, I can't remember what, what were some of the other things in the toolkit, to be honest with you. But, that, you know, the most important to me was to stay involved and to, um, to keep trying to learn new things. Yeah. And we're getting some comments from some of the folks that I'm sure you met along the way. So hi from Craig and Sherry. Craig and Sherry. <laughs> Craig and Sherry, I was think they were the first loopers we met. We met them in the fall on that trip down. In fact, they told us about Wendy. I don't know, Sherry, if you remember that, but mm -hmm. they were, I'm so glad. Hi, it's nice to, that you guys are on because they were fantastic. They were yeah, they, they, they were they were just going to Florida for the winter, but they taught us a lot. They, they sure did. Fun. They sure did. They're probably laughing when they think we actually made it because we were, <laughs> we were we were so green when we when we first met Craig and Sherry. Yeah. And uh, Deborah Bowles said that the Bowles are watching. Um, Hi, Deb. And they obviously have seen your boat because they said it was the king size bed that made it so wide. So that was a feature I don't think we heard yeah, about. Deb and, Deb and KT came on for, and they had their granddaughter too. Mm -hmm. They looped with their granddaughter for a lot of it. It was mm -hmm. by Deb and KT. Yeah, so not a lot of boats have a, that king size bed. <laughs> so that's, that's pretty nice. It was good. Um, my parents actually had a, a 50 foot marine trader that had a king size bed, but it wasn't oh, wow. a walk around. It was, um, yeah. So somebody had to climb over the other person. Yeah. Not real That's convenient. How our first boat was. Yeah, especially right. as you age, it's not a real convenient yeah. situation. It's really so, not. No, those full walk full walk around beds are, are certainly a nice thing to have. Um, so we're seeing uh, some comments from some people that you met along the way. When was it that you you know kind of fell into that groove with other loopers? When you're heading south. You know that's not too common in this for right. loopers heading south towards Florida on the East Coast. Um, so when was it that you started to kind of fall into step with other loopers and, and sort of meet your people? When we left Fort Lauderdale, when we, left Fort Lauderdale um, we had met a couple there, Chris and Rick on Eagle One, um, and we only traveled with them for about two and a half weeks. They were on their very last leg. They were going home to Virginia, mm -hmm. and we spent every day with them for two weeks and. We just had so much fun that it, 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 they taught us all about dock tales, that's for sure. We learned <laughs> dock tales from, Chris. from Chris and Rick on Eagle One and, mm -hmm. you know, had a lot of fun meals out with them. And um, they shared a lot. They'd already done so much of it. They shared a lot of stories with us. And it, it, it was that's when we first started. And then when we got, they left us in Virginia. And we met another, just one more couple that up to the Erie. And then we met our tribe, our group um, mm -hmm. on the Erie Canal. Um, mm -hmm. And I think the first stop that we were with them was Kana Jahari. I think we met them yeah. on Kana Jahari. A mm -hmm. funny story, I'm going on a quick story. It had been Dan's birthday. And one of the loopers who's on here, and I won't embarrass her, decided to surprise him. She went to all the other boats in the marina even people who weren't loopers and said, um, bring a present to, to Doc Tales for Dan's birthday. And we didn't know that was happening. And people brought rolls of wrapping paper, uh, can of beans. I mean, so just. She had the rules. <laughs> yeah, she, she went around and did this. We found out after the fact. <laughs> and said, you have to bring something. It has to come off of your boat. It has to be something you don't want. Right. And, so, <laughs> and that was just really a lot of fun. And those pe many of those people we met that night um, became became our friends. We looped with them and still still keep in touch with them. And, you know, almost without fail, when I ask old loopers what the best part of the trip was, they tell me the people. Um, so it's, it's good to hear that you did, you know, kind of meet your people and meet, met your tribe and continued along the way with them. 100%. Um, yeah. yeah, and we've got another one from you from someone that you traveled with. Uh, fun to see you again. That's Mary Hi, Lou Mary Lou. Yeah, they're on in Chala, yeah. Yep. Um, and a couple who haven't met you yet, but um, hey, Ed and Kathy, good to see you. And um, yes, I have my mermaid wine glass for docktails today. Um, <laughs> yes, this is, and actually, I have. I got this in Norfolk, Virginia at a spring rendezvous um, several years ago. Oh, um, Norfolk is the city. They've got the mermaids all over the town. And right. the coffee shop had this this glass. But um, I have broken it several times and replaced it several times <laughs> since then. Um, and hi, Kevin and Raquel. Good to see you guys, too. Um, and Sam and Rev. Uh, oh, hi, Sam and Rev. Oh, no, you're in Texas. 
<laughs> Sam and Rev from <laughs> Galveston. Yikes, I didn't realize you guys were back in Texas. So, um, yeah, Sam and Rev will actually be on our podcast this week, which will air on Friday. Um, so that is if we can defrost them enough for them <laughs> to speak with us. Um, and they're going to talk a little bit because they, of course, have a pretty active YouTube channel. And they're going to talk about that on our blog this week. Yep. So it'll be a lot of fun. Um, so knowing that a lot of times it's the people that are the best part of the trip. But let's talk about some of the places for those who haven't done the mm -hmm. loop and are sitting perhaps in Galveston. And Sam and Rev have done it. But, you know, everyone else sitting in Texas and other parts of the country that are freezing and would like to just be dreaming about their great loop. What are some of your favorite places? You want to go first? No, I, I I think Canada was my favorite of the of the trip, uh, and then you know, second would be just would be coming up the East Coast. Uh, other, yeah. than, other than that, the rivers the rivers I thought were fun. Everybody hates them. There's not a lot to see out there. Just to me, it was just interesting because I used to live in the area. It's funny that you say that, Gail, because a lot of people don't seem to enjoy the rivers, but the I people didn't. who do really, really enjoy them. Yeah. He did, yeah. Um, I just I, I mean, I mean, I felt it just felt like it was something you had to get done to me, but mm -hmm. he, he, he really enjoyed it. Yeah. And, and I agree that some of our favorite cities on the East Coast, like um, Jekyll Island. I just love Jekyll Island, Charleston, Savannah, um, St. Augustine. I know I'm not going in the right order yeah. there. <laughs> there is a there is a place called Clayton, New York which mm -hmm. is, is that Islands. on in the Thousand, Thousand Islands? Islands. Yeah. yeah, the Thousand Islands area is beautiful. And I agree with Dan. Um, Canada, the weather was perfect, I think, the summer we were in. We were in there summer of 2019, and mm -hmm. the weather was perfect. And we tra were traveling mostly with three other boats. And, I, you know, I told friends from home that it felt like summer camp for adults. You know, <laughs> we boat all day and then raft and swim and dinghy to restaurants. It was it was a really fun summer. Yeah. The one yeah. place I, I would tell people that I feel we rushed through the Thousand Islands too yeah. fast. Mm -hmm. There was a lot more. We should have spent more time there. That was the year the uh, with the problem with the locks, and I was I was worried about not not being in there in the right time slot. And I, I skipped a little bit of time in the Thousand Islands that I shouldn't have done. That, mm -hmm. It's a beautiful area. Plus, there were some places we couldn't go because the water was so high. In, in the lake then. So right. a lot of a lot of marinas were closed. So do you think you'll go back to the Thousand Islands? I would maybe I was hoping to go back this year. I wanted I wanted to go back into Canada, but uh, that's that's not gonna happen. So I think we're gonna be the main coast this year, hopefully and then Yeah. Yeah, that's the big question mark is if and when and um, you know, I suppose with the boat in Massachusetts you could probably um, even if it opens later than most loopers would like who have to get all the way through to Chicago, if it opens later, right. you could probably still cruise up there a little bit, I would guess. But yeah, for loopers who need to, you know, come in through New York and, and travel through the Great Lakes and, and make it through Chicago before this kind of weather sets in, um, that opening date is, is going to be a challenge, I think. Um, so we're all waiting to see. Um, so any other places that, you want to mention any other, you know, fun stories happened along the way? Oh, way too many fun stories, but <laughs> um, fun stories. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Stories what? are all you. Stories um, are all me. <laughs> yeah. In the Chesapeake is beautiful. That's mm -hmm. you know, I I loved Annapolis. In, yeah, uh, Annapolis was cool. Yeah. The Chesapeake Chesapeake surprised me. Just the body of water that it is, and um, you know, we we one of the roughest days we ever had was on the Chesapeake Bay, which just that surprised me. I didn't think it was going to be that rough, but it but it is beautiful. Mm -hmm. So, what do you think you gained from the experience, if anything? You know, how did it change you? What 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 does it mean to you looking back at the Great Loop and and the fact that you accomplished that? That's the, what I was going to say, a feeling of accomplishment for sure. I, mm -hmm. I'm, you know, we talk about this with our looper buddies that how proud we are of ourselves that, that we did it. And, and um, when we all get together, we, 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 ju we just love how we can talk about things that our other, everyone else in our lives just, they're like, oh, that's nice. But they don't really understand because they haven't done it. 
relatively few people actually do something like this. So for me, it's a huge feeling of accomplishment. Definitely, I mean, we made lifelong friends. That's another thing that comes out of it for me. Um, I, I'm, we did really well together as a couple. I'm not going to say we didn't have arguments. And I always say it's really hard to storm downstairs from the flybridge into anywhere else when it's rough out. It's just <laughs> the whole dramatic piece is out the, out the window. But, you know, we, we, it, was, it was really nice to be together day after day with a shared project, everything we were doing, we had to do it together. You had to communicate, you had to do well. And, um, so for me, those are the softer, I know they're all more emotional things, but. Right. For me, it was, a, it was a great transition and wind down from work. If mm -hmm. I didn't have a plan like that, I probably wouldn't, would've went back to work in six months, but it was perfect. We got to be together, there was you know, a plan and this every day, there was something to do, but it was low key and winding down and and the whole thing, I mean, the trip itself is beautiful, but it, for me, it was great, a great way to transition from work to retirement. Mm -hmm. So once you kind of finished the loop and, and that transition was over, uh, did you have what, what I've heard referred to as post loop letdown, those post loop yep. blues, you know, what do yes, you Yes, and then? we came home to COVID. Happen? We yes. got home in June, so we got home to COVID and couldn't yeah. even really see people we wanted to see that we'd missed yeah. for a long time. So, yeah, July was a rough month for me. I was, I, I, and I, it was, it, yeah, it was definitely a letdown to be, to be home. That sounds wrong. I, I mean, I missed my granddaughter like crazy, so it was good to be able to see her, but. And, and my kids too, I guess them, but. Um, <laughs> well, and you did come home to a different world. Yeah, it was films. a different world. So it, was, I, it was a rough month and it, for him too. I mean, he was so happy when we were, he's always happy when we're on any boat at all, but especially that boat. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You're getting home was hard, you know, it's at, like this, like she said this year, especially hard for COVID because a lot of things that you want to be you know, have done them in two years, you want to go do them, you couldn't go anywhere, you couldn't do anything. Right. Yeah, it was it was definitely depressing mm -hmm. to finally finish. You know, you get first three or four days of euphoria that we did this, this is great, and then it's now now what? <laughs> and we we you know we kind of we felt like we had three different wake crossings. Am I saying that right? Yeah, yeah because mm -hmm. we um, we started. We were in Fort Lauderdale, then went to Fort Myers, then did the loop. Um, so we we crossed our way technically in Fort Myers, and then we went down the Keys and back to Fort Lauderdale. So we felt like we crossed it again, and then we brought it all the way home where we'd originally started. So uh, 22 months later, we 22 months on the boat, over, over 10,000 miles. Wow, that's wow. exciting though. Yeah. And, and I can see where that would be a, a tough adjustment to coming back home, especially with COVID, where you really can't, uh, like you said, experience the things that you've missed for, for two years to get out right. there and do them. Yep. So um, Deb and KT mentioned, how about Henry's famous fish and chips? Uh, I'm feeling like there's a story behind that. <laughs> no, was that, oh, was that, well, was that, was was that the, the one where they told us to be quiet? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you have in the new, well, new, this, well, that, new song contest. Yes, right? no. Yeah. Um, so, so Susan decided, Susan Unlucky Me decided, I, I think it was Susan who decided, we were tired of the same looper toast. But, um, there are good ships and that. that so don't go there, we'll get the wrong so, one. <laughs> yeah, so we decided. Let's have a contest. We were texting each other underway one day. I think we were, we were in Canada and the girls were all texting each other. She said, let's have, let's rewrite the toast. Let's have a contest and see who wins. Um, and so we met an objective couple at, at the Anchorage who um, came to Henry's with us and we were reading our, our um, new versions of the toast. And they were some of them were a little off color, right? <laughs> <laughs> but we were we were really loud, and the waitress came over and said, "Shh, be quiet." And I'm like, "Wow, 
<laughs> I felt like we were in the school cafeteria. So is, I, Deb, I don't is that what you meant? I don't. You weren't there, but maybe you heard that story. <laughs> But the food maybe, is really good. Maybe Deb will chime in. But yeah, it does sound a lot like summer camp. <laughs> Was that Henry's or the other one? There's another really good fish and chips place in Canada, too. Yeah. yeah. And, and so Ed and Kathy are at their dirt home, and they would rather be doing boat projects than home projects. I can, <laughs> I can relate to that for sure. Yeah. Um, and John Martin, I don't know if that's somebody you know or not, but he yep. would like to know, um, could you talk about the biggest mechanical challenges that you faced along the way? The, well, the drive shaft thingy. But that, yeah. Well, we, we, it actually wasn't on the on the loop. It was when I, the boat was purchased in Port Lauderdale, and when I was the first year, I was bringing it home, and we had a uh, a drive shaft break, and the thing ended up the summer we were going to learn how to use the boat before the trip. The boat ended up sitting on the hard New Jersey for the summer, so. That that was the worst thing that happened on on the loop itself. You know, some loose fan belts, um, a hose. But but what he'd learned about the drive shafts really required him to maintain it. He had a, a a maintenance routine that he did every single day. That's another thing I remember from the toolkit. We we'd hired a captain when we first bought the boat in Fort Lauderdale uh, two years before we looped, and. Um, he he taught us both a lot and one of them was about uh, daily maintenance and that's something dan was religious about so every day when we got in he or uh, usually when we got in so he could relax and be ready to go in the morning uh, you know he wanted to just pull the power pull the water and off we'd go he'd check all the fluids Fluid and um, grease the drive shaft because it had to stay greased all the time that was I think that was the biggest mechanical issue we had at Knockwood. We didn't have anything major happen. Maybe small stuff, uh, you know, toilet pump, uh, fresh water pump. And I think that, that was really it when we were mm -hmm. truly on the loop, you know, it's very minor stuff. Did you carry spares with you for things like those pumps? Yes. There were a few times when we were underway, and it always would happen when we were out in the ocean. When we were outside, that an air pump or an air filter, no, no, an air, air filter, fuel filter, fuel filter go. would go. And one of the one, all I know is I had to drive the boat while he went down and changed things when we were underway. But that happened a few times, but thankfully nothing major. Yeah, how comfortable are you at this point, Jody, um, handling the boat? Um, I'm, I'm way, I'm pretty comfortable. Uh, I can't, I'm not. <laughs> I don't yell for him to take over the helm when I see another boat coming in the, in the, <laughs> in the other direction, which mm -hmm. I absolutely did in the beginning. I've never docked it. I did practice at home this summer. We live on a river. I see Laurie Sullivan's on. Mm -hmm. um, we, we, I tried to dock it on, we have friends who have a floating dock out in the middle of the river. Um, and I tried a couple times to dock there but I need a lot more practice for docking but I absolutely can operate it when he's doing something else he at one point on the trip Dan got sick he ended up last winter having a really bad pneumonia and for three days from actually from Fort Lauderdale to Titusville, Titusville. wasn't it yeah. he would get out of the marina sleep behind me and I'd drive all the way there and then wake mm -hmm. up and dock it. So I, I had to drive then or we weren't going anywhere. So I, it's good I could. Yeah, well, and that's, that's good to hear um, because particularly for um, nervous boaters, that can sometimes be a challenge. And that's, mm -hmm. you know, you don't have to be able to drive it as well as your partner, but you have to be able to drive it if there's an emergency situation and for some reason, Dan can't. Right. So I'm, I'm glad to hear that that's worked for you right. and that you've got that comfort level with it. Um, what advice do the two of you have for people who are watching who maybe are still planning and, and wishing and dreaming? Do it. I know everybody says that, but I'm so glad we did it. It was, it, it, it was such a big deal for us, and we did it, and we feel really accomplished. I think we're better for having done it. Yes. I mean, I think we're, we're a better couple. We, we, um, we work well together now. Because it. What do you mean now? Hey, when, you, you, you know, when you're running your normal life, what do you do? You, you don't have to be. You don't dock your living room. 
You know, you know, you're not, you're, I'm not dependent on her to okay. Get get that spring line over there now and tell them to clean it. You know, mm -hmm. it just you 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 really you're forced forced to work together in, in situations that could be dangerous if if you didn't do it right. Mm -hmm. There's a good title for your next. Um, for your next discussion, you can't dock a living room. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. that is very true. That's a good reason to get out there too. <laughs> yep. So we are still taking questions from those of you watching on Facebook. So if you type those into the comments, it seems to take a few minutes for those to pop into where we can see them. So if you've typed them and we haven't um, mentioned them yet or any or anything along that line, that is just because we haven't seen them yet. Um, and we just had one pop, another one pop in. Oh, you were team. You know, when we were when you were talking about mechanics as remembering the day one of the holding tanks needed to be replaced. And Laurie's husband Kevin spent an entire day in 80 degree hot sun taking out one of our holding tanks with Danny and repairing it mm -hmm. and replacing it. So, talk about teamwork. That was that would have been a horrible horrible job for just one person. Yeah, holding tanks, that whole system is something that is never fun to have to mess with. That's right. Um, yes, I completely agree with you there. So um, any other advice for planners, dreamers? You, you, you just, you got to get out of their planning stage. I mean, mm -hmm. I had a wake up call that pushed me out of the planning stage. And our lives, I feel my life is our, both our lives is far better for it. We did, we did an amazing thing. It's, you, you, know, you, get, you say that great, that great feeling of accomplishment, but you just get over that hump and actually do it. Actually, you know, buy the go look at that boat, but buy it. Mm -hmm. You know, don't <laughs> yeah. don't continue to look at a hundred of them. Yeah, and, and 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 I think don't be afraid to ask other people for help. I mean, for 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 little things like what. Don't be embarrassed. Like, I'm so glad I asked Craig and Sherry what weather app they were using way back. I think we were in CoinJock having a drink with them in CoinJock on our way down in the fall. And it, we were kind of embarrassed that, that we were always afraid people would think, why are they doing this if they don't know that? But we, you learn so much from other people, and hopefully we've helped people too. So I'm glad you brought that up, Jody, Jody because um, – Every all of us started somewhere. I'm still, you know, a neophyte when it comes to a lot of this stuff. I've been Absolutely. voting, but not in the you know that same. Um, and yeah, I, you know, I, I really hope that people don't have the impression that people on the loop already know everything because most of us don't. No, we don't. Um, <laughs> and yeah, definitely don't be too proud to ask for sure. Um, and I'm glad that you did that and learned along the way. And, and thank you for being here to give back some of that information to others. Um, this is kind of a put you on the spot kind of question. So feel uh -oh. free to say it was awful. But what did your <laughs> what did your AGLCA membership mean to you? I'll go first. Um, well, I still look at it every day, believe it or not. And mm -hmm. um, I, 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 it was it's just good to know that there are other, other like-minded people out there and and that you know that maybe you can help other people i i i, I read it every day i read the forum every day i don't mm -hmm. go into the site every day to be honest with you but right. um for, here here's an example in fact john martin helped us a couple of years ago we needed to get new insurance and i i didn't know where to start and it helped us figure out how to get new insurance. There were times along the way we were looking for harbor hosts. Remember that one day we ended up on Beth Tyler's dock because yep. I found them through through the through the um, website. So mm -hmm. you just have to, you know, it's a good resource. It really truly is. I'm not just saying that because you're here, Kim. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. Like I said, I'm all about complete honesty. So if it wasn't a great resource, I would rather know that so we can work more at it. Um, but I'm yep. glad you found it to be a good resource. Um, and Sam had a suggestion, uh, do it sooner rather than later. Remember what Captain Ron said, <laughs> one of those best quotes, if it's going to happen, it's going to happen out there for sure. Yep. <laughs> so we um, are just about out of time and I'm not seeing any other questions pop in just yet. So um, any final thoughts, Jody or Dan? No, this was fun. Thank you. This was fun. I really appreciate you doing this. I think um, 
being able to see the comments definitely made it more interactive. So I think that was a great improvement over our first one. So we'll continue working on these, um, but I think this was great. And I really appreciate you being here and spending your time. I know you're um, in Florida and working towards getting that vaccine soon. So good for you. Tomorrow um, for him, he gets his first shot tomorrow. So that's excellent. Good. Good. Yeah. Well, <laughs> stay safe out there. And again, thanks for your time. And thanks for sharing this with your other loopers. For everyone who joined us live, or if you're watching this recorded, we thank you for being with us. You can find more information about The Great Loop and about AGLCA at greatloop.org. And we are uh, working to do this every two weeks. So we should have another one for you two weeks from this evening. Um, if you have any suggestions for us, if you're, or if you're a gold looper who would like to be with us on one of these doc tales, please feel free to reach out to me. You can get me here on Facebook or at my email, which is krusso at greatloop.org. So Dan and Jody Symes, done digging. Thanks again for joining me today. This was great. A lot of fun. Thanks, Thank Kim. You. Cheers, Thanks. everyone. Bye-bye. Stay Bye. safe. You too.